All right, welcome back to Morning Live. And right now, today, when is the 26th of June 2019, is the International Day Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Trafficking, also known as IDADA. And in studio, I'm joined by Susan Maua from Nakada, who will be telling us about the situation on the ground and how this can be turned. Because all the same, when you see the United Nations coming strongly to put this their side, it means detrimental situations have been happening to especially young people people who've been a drug um, um, addicts and so much has been happening to even an ex and to us. some of them commit suicide. Susan, good morning. Good morning. And good to see you this morning. Yeah, and these are not your hours, <laughs> but you're welcome to Switch TV Morning morning Live. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's chilly, but let's talk about this day. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's kind of very... Um, strong day because when you say strong day it means it's also strong for the youth mm -hmm. as you're thinking right now uh, a young person uh, he or she is abusing drugs somewhere is using a drug somewhere mm -hmm. now societal vices societal issues of young people have been exposed to so much maybe from your angle let's start with the day itself why was the day put aside okay so the day was put aside way back in uh, december 1987 okay. and you know that when we talk about drug issues it's not just a Kenyan problem yeah but it's a, a, a worldwide problem mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. so having a day like this creates an opportunity to raise awareness people may be aware but mm -hmm. you know just just focusing on a given day yeah so that people can address the issues that affect them at the local level yeah and um, it's it's a matter of rallying our efforts together mm -hmm. like, like uh, today you'll find that we are in Kisumu mm -hmm. but there are many more people who are participating okay. and it's not just in Kisumu but mm -hmm. I every um, other place where we have uh, Nakada offices mm -hmm. we are also having those um, meetings and other activities mm -hmm. that just aim at raising awareness okay. to the drug problem mm -hmm. across the world and also in Kenya. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, when you talk about uh, drug abuse, and uh, as I said earlier, it concentrate mostly on the young people. Yeah. Um, let's start with parenting, because when we hear cases of um, a young person is trying to commit suicide somewhere because depression rates have maybe hit a high mm -hmm. and society will actually not even see the parent society will blame this kid society will blame uh, the group the kid or the young man or the young lady walks with mm -hmm. hangs out with but looking at the home care do you think there's a gap over there there's actually a huge gap because unfortunately Parenting, there is no school where parenting is taught. Yeah. So there is a tendency to parent the way you are parented, or you may do it differently from, your par from the way your parent did it. And then the other thing that you'll find that today, a lot of things have changed. So you find that parents have become very busy. And you know that the family, and that is where parenting begins, is actually the social fabric of the society. Mm -hmm. So if the children are not given attention by their parents, <clears throat> then you'll find that the kind of things that they are going to do yeah. is going to be depending on what their peers are doing mm -hmm. and what else is also happening around their own environment. Yes. So it is the parents who <coughs> really begin to give direction to the children. Mm -hmm. So the way the parents are going to socialize their children will determine how they are going to turn out. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example like if at home the parent is using alcohol and you know that's the most common substance. Actually if you look at the researches yeah. the most common yeah. substance is actually alcohol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that means that if the parent, let's say you have a fridge at home, yeah. most of the time it's in the living room, yeah. it has alcohol, you have already demonstrated as a parent mm -hmm. that this is okay. Mm -hmm. So by the time, and you'll be the last one to realize that your child has started using. Okay. So by the time uh, you begin to tell them how wrong it is, you had already endorsed it by your behavior. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Now as Nakada, what's the situation on the ground? Yes, you've mentioned <coughs> alcohol is the most abused, yeah. but looking at um, injectables, all those things that are happening, especially in our coastal area of this country, mm -hmm. uh, what's the situation on the ground? The situation on the ground is whether you are looking at the population in general 
or you are looking at yeah. young people mm -hmm. right from primary school because yeah. uh, we recently just launched the primary school survey okay. that is still showing that alcohol is is our biggest problem actually the problem is with the legal substances mm -hmm. so we have alcohol um, you may you may be surprised that the second one is actually prescription drugs wow. before we get to tobacco and then we have mira so okay. Okay. Um, a substance like cannabis actually comes down number five or six yeah okay. so yes at the cost a lot of awareness has been raised with regard to injecting drug use but you'll find that the population yes the population is growing but it is much smaller mm -hmm. even at the cost you'll find that the biggest challenge is still alcohol wow yeah okay mm -hmm. <laughs> well that day alcohol will be illegal in this country i don't know what will happen anyway um so looking at even the population general population in this country alcohol yep. the most abused mm -hmm. but um when you see it performance you see um when you talk to about uh, when you talk about productivity Mm -hmm. in our workplaces yeah. do you think uh, there's a factor it's been affecting productivity even like even the economy of this country what do you think about even the output that even these guys are um, are really uh, showcasing out there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know uh, a healthy nation mm -hmm. is the one that would able to be to be able to build a, an economy yeah yes mm -hmm. so once you have people who have <coughs> problems with addiction mm -hmm. then you find that even their productivity will go down. Okay. So at the workplace, you're likely to have this absenteeism, which yeah. is which is very obvious. Yeah. But there's also presentism. So wow. when you come and you are counting the number of people who are there, yeah. oh yes, I'm there. Yeah. But yeah. what am I producing? Absolutely. Zero. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. So absolutely. there is absenteeism and then there is presentism. Mm -hmm. So at the workplace, that is going to be. So we're talking of formal employment, but even in in formal employment, the person will not be able to. Uh, function very well yeah. because of you know you know if you used it <coughs> the previous night it mm -hmm. means that even waking up in the morning is yeah. a challenge yeah. so you are likely to be suffering from hangover or whatever you are withdrawing from mm -hmm. yeah okay yeah. Our, our curriculum in schools mm -hmm. yes we touched on drug abuse yeah. not extensively it was just a topic that you jumped to the next one drug abuse the impact on your body and all those things mm -hmm. but uh, looking at even the impact on the health of anyone's health around the globe, eh? mm -hmm. uh, it's been catastrophic, detrimental to so many people. Yeah. As an academy, maybe right now in Kenya, um, are you doing anything to make sure the education is out there that indeed you might feel this way for some time, but the long term impact of what you're using mm -hmm. will actually be very, very uh, harsh on your body later on in your life? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. Um, other than raising awareness, because w we get quite some bit of requests here and there, schools asking us to oh, come and speak to the children, but more often than not, when they, t they call you, it means that there is already a problem. Yeah. yeah. And you know, for a young person, in the first place, you should not be using drugs. Yeah. You are supposed to focus on your academic issues. Absolutely. Yeah, so yeah. using drugs will lead to um, low academic achievement. But now, with the school curriculum, and especially the, uh, the new one, this has also been incorporated right from uh, the lower level mm -hmm. as you get to the upper level okay. and uh, hopefully even the secondary school level. Okay. Yeah. All right. So it's, it's more, at that, at that age, it's more of skills mm -hmm. because that is the other thing that uh, young people right from childhood yeah. are missing, okay. especially in today's parenting because mm -hmm. you find that we because we have house helps we don't give children time um to learn okay. things mm -hmm. and you know those life skills are at home yeah. the issues of decision making the issues of assertiveness the issues of you know how do you even respond to invitations yeah. because if that is not done then it means that when you grow older even when somebody is offering you yeah. a drug mm -hmm. you will not be able to say no because you do not have the skills absolutely yeah all right so we take a short break right here morning live when we come back we'll be focusing more on the pressure trust me there's so much pressure among the young people and sometimes they say they need to cool down by cooling down sometimes they use drugs to make sure that at least they are relaxed but you know at the end of the day there must be an impact about this thing it might be very detrimental to your life performance goes down in so many ways and all that and also cartels i was not kind of doing about the cartels because same same names being mentioned 
day in, day out, but what are they doing on the ground as a government? Well, they're coming to you after a short break. Stay tuned to Morning Life. Welcome back to Morning Live. Interesting uh, conversation just um, when you took a break. But still, let's talk about um, the issue of relaxing. You know, as Nakada, uh, they are aware with the statistics. Also, the bigger question before the first question is, now, when you talk about abuse, the saying um, cannabis is actually at number five and alcohol the most abused. Our traditional, uh, the, our forefathers actually, so many ceremonies in Africa. Busa Changa was actually at their disposal. Kids used to see this thing. Adverts, some time back, uh, right here in Kenya, there's an advert that was really, really common. Bada Kazi Burudrika with some beer. Now, all these things went into people's minds thinking alcohol is a good thing. After job, you go <laughs> one for the road and you go home. Now, looking at this, Susan, um, there's so much advertisement of advertisements of alcohol out here. And when you say it's the most abused, mm -hmm. it's at people's disposal. Adverts every day, billboards, all those things. Now, cannabis, mm -hmm. it's illegal in this country mm -hmm. at number five. It's because guys are hiding it. Mm -hmm. There's so many things surrounding all this. Maybe you can expand more on that. Mm -hmm. Well, you know the the, the the cultural context, and it's not just it's not just Busa or Changa. At the coast, you're also going to find Mnazi. Mm -hmm. Yes, you know the coast people. I used to work at the coast before okay. I, I came to the headquarters, okay. and that it was one issue. In fact, the people would be in shock that you're saying that Mnazi, they are natural product. <laughs> yeah. Mm. It's actually alcohol. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> because so many of them are using. Yeah. And so they do not want to convince themselves in their brain mm -hmm. that they have yeah. a problem. Yeah. So the problem is with the cannabis smoker, it's with the heroin user, the cocaine user, and so yeah, on. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So th th it's more of perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The perception of harm. And that, that's where now the young person comes in. Mm -hmm. When a young person perceives that it's not harmful to smoke cannabis, they are, they'll have a higher chance of actually doing it. If you, as a parent, you're using it at home, or their peers, or their siblings are using it at home, it means that you also lower their perception of harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why <coughs> it increases their chances of trying to use it. Mm -hmm. But if your parent ever told you, Chang'a is not good, yeah. You take that to mind. Absolutely. And chances that you are going to use is much lower because one, the perception of harm and also how does your parent view you? Mm -hmm. If they think it is something which is wrong, then that becomes. Absolutely. Then it, yes, it will reduce mm -hmm. your chances. And that is why now you find more and more I keep coming back to the issues of yeah. parenting. Yeah. This is where... Mm -hmm. It all begins. Okay. Yes. Now, health impacts. When you talk about, okay, when you smoke these in 10 years, something will happen. Not now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They told people, oh, you're smoking it right now? Okay. In 10 years, actually, you'll, feeling like, you'll be feeling like a madman or something. But still, you know, it's also a day where a trafficking has been put on notice. Yes. And as Nakada, I'm very sure, you know the corners. Mm -hmm. You are very aware of the corners that actually this thing, there's a cycle of, uh, of exchange whereby mm -hmm. a key supplier, to mini supplier, to mini mini supplier, to the mm -hmm. consumer. Yeah. Now, you know very well all these corners. What are you doing about this? All right. Uh, um, I like the fact that any time we talk about NACADA, the National Authority for yeah. the Campaign mm -hmm. Against Alcohol and Drug Abuse, Abuse. most of the time people <coughs> want to talk about supply. Yeah. But you'll find that our work is basically on demand reduction. Okay. Yeah. So demand reduction is about... Not fighting it. Is, is about, you know, when you talk about demand reduction, it means you're talking about prevention issues yeah, okay. so that you stop them before mm -hmm. they start. Uh -huh, you delay uh -huh. the starting. And those who have started, mm -hmm. you can actually stop them from becoming dependent. That means going to the source. Yeah. And that, uh, that one has to do with the, with the, the individuals themselves. Mm -hmm. So whether you're talking of children or you're talking of families. Now, when you look at the other continuum of it, and that is supply reduction. Yes. There are many more people who are within that area of supply reduction. Okay. So it calls for multi-agency approach. Mm -hmm. You may be aware that we have anti-narcotics unit. Yes. Those are the people who are trained mm -hmm. and so can tell the difference between 
unga ya chapati yes and cocaine absolutely because you and i yeah with we our are, naked eye we, we may not be able to tell yes sure. so you see these are the people who are essentially trained to be able to do this mm -hmm. yeah we have other people like even kra you know there are those who look at things to do with the imports yeah. and also exports yeah. and looking at revenue and how people bring in so that is also another channel mm -hmm. now at the port because those are usually some of the ports, the, the points of entry mm -hmm. at the airport and also at the seaport. Those are other avenues through which even drugs will come in. Yeah. So there is, there is a whole network of surveillance. Mm -hmm. And you know that police are directly involved. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. So they are a lot more people. And so you find that when we come in as an ACADA, it means that we... Part of our work then is even educating the community. Yeah. But when it comes to um, supply reduction, there are a lot more people involved. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Now, um, looking at the punishment, mm -hmm. drug traffickers mm -hmm. um, from the airport, from the sea, very poor as, uh, entries and exit. Yes. Um, are you satisfied with how um, the law has actually uh, pushed them to the walls? Whereby now you're found with this is actually life imprisonment. You're found in these 10 years in, but there's some people who feel like it's still not enough because uh, that young boy will be found in one stick of cannabis mm -hmm. and it will be taken in for so many years. Mm -hmm. But this mogul who has been supplying uh, kilos of heroin, cocaine, mm -hmm. just goes caught free because this connection within some alliance of the government, as mm -hmm. it is, by the way, it's happening. Yeah. Do you think you're happy with such things? And are you satisfied with how even the law is taking control of this? Well, I would not say that we are, we are really satisfied because, you know, first of all, these cases, there are quite a number of cases in court and they take a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, the issues of corruption are there because you know that this is something that affects our country in all corners. And so aspects of corruption are also there. So sometimes you may find that the case is done in such a way that, first of all, it drags for so long. Yeah. Until uh, probably even the witnesses get tired. Mm -hmm. Maybe along the way they get threatened and all sorts of things happen. So definitely that is not, that is not um, something that we would say we are pleased. But uh, I'm, I'm sure that you have noted that even our president has taken some action. You remember like... Um, one of the ships that one time yeah, was, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. instead of <coughs> waiting for that whole process, you find that there was destruction, so that you know some kind of was speeding up. But yeah. There's a lot of a lot of work happening um, just behind behind mm -hmm. the scenes that you and mm -hmm. I may yeah. not be aware of. Okay. Yes. Okay. So well, there is the aspect of um, the law being punitive, and uh, again there is also. Um, revision of the same the same law it's it's being revised at the at the, at the moment there's amendments so that <clears throat> the penalties can also be made harsher mm -hmm. but at the same time recognize that on the other hand the one person with the stick you're talking about could be an addict and that's where you find that on a day like this this time we are talking about um, the, the theme mm -hmm. Health for justice and justice for health. Mm -hmm. Yes, because okay. there is the the, the <coughs> human rights aspect of it. Okay. So a sick person, just like um, the, the 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 fact that an addict, they know very well that yes, I've even received a letter mm -hmm. of warning. Mm -hmm. uh, probably uh, this is the last time that um, if if I do not perform then I'm going to be interdicted. Okay. But they'll say, let me just go and take a little bit because the person is already sick. Okay. So you see such a person, you take them to prison, mm -hmm. you're not helping them. Okay. So even right now, um, as Nakada, we are even supporting uh, Kodiaga Prison okay. to have a rehabilitation center mm -hmm. within. Okay. And then you'll find their efforts also for Shimulatev and so mm -hmm. on because you mm -hmm. recognize that, yes, yes, there are those who are going to be um, convicted mm -hmm for drug use Absolutely. because it's still against the law to be found in position. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So probably those cases move faster. Okay. 
because probably they don't know how to defend themselves and mm -hmm. so on. So there's a lot of awareness raising okay. so that you support and you don't <coughs> punish. Okay. So that you aim at, you know, giving this person uh, the, the service they require. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that they mm -hmm. can come back to health. Mm -hmm. yes. Interesting. Yeah. So um, when you talk about um, the illicit bruise, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's been something very detrimental to even uh, a man's health. Mm -hmm. um, there was a time we had kumi kumi. You remember those days? Mm -hmm. Where this thing was so cheap. And then when you take one glass, you're out completely. And sometimes even your vision will be affected. Mm -hmm. And so many people have died, blind, gone blind because of this um, funny bruise. Um, I, are you aware of what's happening on the ground just to um, try to sort out all these things affecting our society? Because um, these are people who are uh, depressed. They want to cool down. Mm -hmm. Do you think also it starts with talking to them first, mm -hmm. keeping them busy, before now trying to reduce the demand, as you actually say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so keep, keeping them busy is something that, that works. But did you know that there are more people employed who use drugs okay. than actually people who are unemployed? So it's not about employment versus unemployment. Okay, is there so yeah. much pressure at work? <laughs> yes, there, there is pressure at work. <laughs> but also... Like you said, the advertisement, by the Akazi. Absolutely. So you see, this is ingrained yeah, in your head. Yeah. And sometimes your own peers, you know, when you talk of peer influence, it's not just the adolescent, it's not just the 20-year-old, but you'll even find 30-year-olds and so on. Yeah. And somebody says, oh, so why are you getting home early? Mm -hmm. You know, you are not chicken. You're not part of chicken who uh, have to arrive home early and so on. So mm -hmm. you see, that kind of peer influence makes you say, oh, okay. all right. Okay. Absolutely. And before you know it, mm -hmm. it is, it's not just, for, and in Kenya, mm -hmm. we have this holiday called the Members Day. Okay. You don't, you don't need to sign up, just become a member. All right. Yes. We take a short break, but when we come back now, I will be focusing on much more of these issues because now, at the end of the day, the youths are on the sport. So all that coming to you after a short break. Welcome back to Morning Live. Of course, Sylvia Hamad from the Kenya Red Cross has, has just actually joined us because the conversation is getting interesting. She had to come in and of course be part of it. And we, we are focusing on the young people. And the young people have been on the sport. Uh, illicit, that is uh, illicit uh, drug uh, trafficking and of course uh, drug abuse. And when you talk about pressure in a society, when you talk about stress, there are the people who are told actually, we are told that they're most depressed because of so many issues in our society. Sylvia, good morning. Good morning. Good, good to see you today. Good to see you too. All right. Mm -hmm. The day itself, drug abuse, mm -hmm. illicit trafficking, put aside by the UN, mm -hmm. but looking at what's happening. I understand Kenya Red Cross is also a very, very big uh, um, a partner in making sure that indeed this mm -hmm. thing is actually getting, uh, gotten rid of. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think what's happening? What's, what's happening on the ground so far? I think what's happening is a lot. Mm -hmm. There's a lot that has been going on in terms of just creating awareness around drug and substance abuse for the young people, especially the adolescents. Okay. And I know we have Nakada in the room, and yes. they did a very interesting study that they released last week mm -hmm. around drug abuse in schools. Mm -hmm. okay. And children as young as nine, eight are being exposed to hard drugs like cocaine and heroin. This is something that wasn't there before. Okay. Of course it was there, but mm -hmm. now it's become more pronounced. Mm -hmm. And as Red Cross, we've been doing, it's been an age-old involvement yeah. we've, been, we've been doing. We've been doing awareness creation in schools in terms of just making the young people understand that getting in drugs is a bad thing yeah. and uh, looking at how they can have positive influence mm -hmm. in their lives mm -hmm. not to get into drugs. And also we do have interventions around harm reduction mm -hmm. where we work with the people who are already using drugs mm -hmm. to try and prevent some of the public health impacts that come with using drugs such okay. as HIV and AIDS mm -hmm. and other you know, blood transfused infections yeah. that could come th due to sharing of needles and syringes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But also um, sometime early this year we actually opened a rehabilitation center because we realized that in as much as the awareness creation is going on, yeah. prevention is happening, yeah. there are those ones already getting into drugs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. a lot of our young people are wasting away 
you know, yeah. very prime years, as young as 16, 18 years getting into addiction, and then their life just comes to a standstill because they cannot work, they cannot be involved meaningfully in society. Mm -hmm. So we felt it's important to go beyond just awareness creation. Mm -hmm. So in collaboration with people like NACADA, Ministry of Health, we set up a rehabilitation center in Lamu. Uh -huh. It is uh -huh. among the biggest ones in the country at the moment. Uh, I think it's a hundred, uh, it can host a hundred people at a go, okay. inpatient services, mm -hmm. but 50 male, 50 female. Okay. But we are looking at expanding depending mm -hmm. on how then the, the services are being taken the demand is high wow. well, why, cost? The, why cost we went to the cost because the cost is one of the centers mm -hmm. or the foci of drug abuse okay uh, basic reason being it's a port of entry yeah. into this yeah. country yeah. a lot of drugs pass through there as they go to other places yeah. of this world yeah. and you get the remnants remaining yes. there so we have our young people being used as traffickers mm -hmm. i know you can't traffic something you're not using it's true that it's so true most that of the so traffickers tricky. end up yeah. using yeah. and and you know like <coughs> in the rehab when we opened it in in february this year mm -hmm. we had the first 10 clients who came in and surprisingly they were all either cocaine or heroin users. Uh -huh. Not not alcohol, not uh -huh. not tobacco. Uh -huh. So that just shows you the magnitude of the problem. Wow. Because there are a lot of people who drink. Okay. But then you have yeah. those ones who then now go into the hard drugs. Mm -hmm. So so far we've managed to to discharge around eight of them. They are back in society. They mm -hmm. are doing very well. Mm -hmm. We've enrolled them as peer educators to support the others, uh -huh. walk through the journey uh -huh. of rehabilitation, uh -huh. but also they are becoming very positive influence in their wow. families. Wow. And we now have another 13 that have come on board mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the process. Wow. So we realize the demand is very high. Now, the only challenge we are having is somebody to pay for those costs. Because the people that. who are involved in drugs have used everything, everything they have everything. to buy those drugs. Family? Family is devastated because, yeah. you know, most of them are breadwinners. Yeah. So you'd find a father or an, a son in the family who is the one using the drugs. And they've sold basically everything in the house. Wow. You know, so it's by the time you, they're getting into rehabilitation, mm -hmm. they don't mm -hmm. even have money to put food on the table. It's true that. So yeah. we need people to come on board mm -hmm. to support mm -hmm. uh, these people go through this Absolutely. journey of rehabilitation. Now, Susan. Yeah. Uh, rehabs, you know, at the end of the day, um, it's it's happening, but rehabs are really helping people out here. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think they're doing enough? Uh, Susan actually, um, uh, Silva has actually mentioned something very important mm -hmm. that is an overwhelming kind of a, um, a response, which is good, mm -hmm. which is a very good thing. Yeah. Uh, do you think they're doing enough? You know, we have so many rehabilitation centers around the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you think mm -hmm. they're doing enough to make sure? Because there are also cases where a young person has gone to rehab and the cycle continues. Rehab, abuse. Rehab, abuse. Mm -hmm. Nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd say uh, the rehabs are doing uh, enough and I must commend Red Cross. She's saying it's among the, la the, the, the biggest. Yes, I think it's second. Second after Jomek. Yeah. Because Jomek has a, takes up a much higher number okay. than that. Okay. And rehab um, treatment works, but there is this other component. You know, there is being inside the rehabilitation facility, mm -hmm. especially for inpatient. Mm -hmm. You know, you're dealing with individual issues. Yes. But now there is also the component that is outside. Absolutely. Including the family. Yes. How well is the family supporting this mm -hmm. person? Mm -hmm. Because when you talk of reintegration, mm -hmm. it's about even that community accepting the person. Yes. Mm. Sometimes they label them. Yeah. 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 Mm. That drunkard, mm. you know, uh, yeah. um, the addict, mm. and whatever other name that they mm. give. You mm. know, there are various labels depending on which community mm. you come mm. from. Mm. Mm. That does not help yeah. the person. Mm. Yeah. And then the other thing also, addiction is a chronic relapsing disease. Yeah. Mm. So that is why it means that when the person, w they still require support. Mm. So they may be out of the facility, mm. but they still need to go for uh, support group meetings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will still require counseling. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it is a continuous thing. And okay. that is why sometimes you find, sometimes they lapse, mm. sometimes they relapse. Okay. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So once in a while they get back, mm -hmm. but they need somebody to keep supporting them. Mm -hmm. yeah. That yes, you have fallen, mm -hmm. but you can still rise up and yeah, keep walking. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's so much pressure. Mm. Um, uh, the young people are so much under pressure. Mm. And when she mentioned earlier um, that parenting has a problem, there's mm. a gap, there's a big gap in parenting mm. whereby there's so much pressure to the kids. Mm. They need to perform, mm. they need to move out, mm. they need to do so much. Yeah. And you see, also when you try to compare uh, mm. neighbor A, neighbor B, and your children, 
it becomes so catastrophic to them because maybe they're using other ways to make succeed, right. but now you're actually inserting so much pressure on this kid mm. and it results to them wanting to be escapists mm. with drugs. Mm. So do you think also parents have a very huge role to play in this? Of course parents do. And uh, it even just goes beyond drug abuse. You know, we are also dealing with issues like teenage pregnancies and yes, all these things so are happening. showing so right that now, there is a problem. Consent, like someone wants to listen to 16. <laughs> like, goodness. Yeah, you can't fix a problem yeah. by creating another uh, problem. This is the unfortunate <laughs> thing. But actually, yes, parents have a very important role to play. Yeah. And, um, and, and parents need to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem with the parents of now, you know, when we were growing up, we used to have our parents who would talk to aunties, uncles. You would have a place where you can express yourself. Yes. But right now, the way the society is, parents are very busy. You know, we are all hustling, yeah. looking for money. Yeah. But by the time you finish looking for money, then you don't have your family. It's true. Right. So parents need to be available. I think I, I told you that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, whoa, whoa, that's yeah. a very powerful one. Yeah. Because yeah. by the time you're looking for money, yes. you come back home. You don't have your family. Yeah. Absolutely. The family is gone yeah. either yeah. in drugs or yeah. the, the girls have gotten pregnant or, you know, something oh, like that. So parents have, a, it's actually parents are the core to all these mm -hmm. discussions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We need to look at how do they come back to being parents mm -hmm. who are supportive to their children mm -hmm. and not being these parents who are just putting food and money on the table. Yeah, yeah. Beyond okay. food and money on the table, are mm -hmm. you there for your family? Okay. I think that's the most important. And maybe just to build on the aftercare component. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, it's true, most of the people who go through rehab, mm -hmm. when they go back home, there's a lot of stigma still. And yes. we've seen that in the ones we've discharged. Eh? Mm -hmm. And we had, of course, to do family therapies. We've been doing a yes. lot of engaging the families through the journey. So yes. you start, as you start off the rehabilitation process, you also start a, a rehabilitation process for mm -hmm. the family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the family therapy sessions are very <coughs> important because then that family becomes the support mechanism mm -hmm. of that person. Okay. When the person is released from the active medical you mm -hmm. know, interventions mm -hmm. for, for addiction, mm -hmm. then they go back home, they have to get an environment where they will be supported mm -hmm. and not pointed at fingers okay. because then they get back into, you know, being depressed and, mm -hmm. and starting to look for a way of escaping from okay. their problems. Okay. Okay. But then also another thing is giving them skills. For us in the rehab in Lamu, we are doing vocational trainings, mm -hmm. we are doing business development. So once somebody has been uh, gone through the process of detoxification and is, able, is stable, then they start being trained on basic things. Okay. Okay. So they are given back a bit of skills. By the time they are going back to society, society, they have something they can do okay. you know, at the end of the day. Okay. But there are still families who will still not accept. Wow. So we have one or two families who we still have, as much as should have discharged uh, you know, their family members, mm -hmm. we still have them at the rear because they've refused to accept yeah. that this person okay. has actually okay. changed. Okay. So it's a journey. You <coughs> have to work with you the family, mm -hmm. but also with the mm -hmm. individual. Mm -hmm. So bringing mm -hmm. all this together, to, mm -hmm. together also with the community around. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have to involve the leaders, mm -hmm. you have to involve the elders, for them to understand that this person needs support okay. throughout. So, yeah, as we're winding up, uh, mm -hmm. what's Kenya Red Cross doing? Are we looking forward to expansion from Lamu? Mm -hmm. to other areas, Nyeri, Kakamega, Kisumu, Moranga. Mm -hmm. You know, this area is also we're having so much problem in terms of even alcoholism. Yeah. Like I went to Moranga the other day, it was bad. Like these people are jobless. Mm -hmm. uh, trust me, one kilometer, three men, yeah. three mature women yeah. sleeping. sleeping. They call it blackout mm -hmm. on the road. Is there any, 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 any maybe plan to expand mm -hmm. such rehabs mm -hmm. to these areas before you wind up? I think for now, not yet. We are still working on the LAM one, mm -hmm. but I know Nakada has plans to work with counties mm -hmm. to increase the number of rehab facilities. Okay. So we are working with Nakada towards okay. you know, supporting that mm -hmm. process. But as Kenya Red Cross, we want to focus on ensuring mm -hmm. that the LAM facility is functional. Okay. We've had discussions with the NYS on the Miritini facility, okay. which is still under discussion. Okay. So we'll be looking at uh, doing it step by step. Mm -hmm. But through our branches, mm -hmm. we are doing the prevention mm -hmm. interventions. So mm -hmm. we are working with our Red Cross clubs in schools, uh -huh. we're working with the youth chapters, we are working with the, you know, the, youth, uh, the youth clubs that we have mm -hmm. to be able to just communicate on drugs, Absolutely. telling the young people not to be involved. Absolutely. And if they're involved, where, where can they get help mm -hmm. from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. uh, Susan, for coming. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sylvia, also for coming. I believe um, we'll get solutions soon. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, while we were growing up, some of us, we he used to hear these or even watch these adverts um Bada Akazi, mm -hmm. Burudika <laughs> the, those, all these adverts actually on on, on our television uh, yeah. newspapers yeah. and uh, alcohol she mentioned number it's one yeah number yeah. one like it's being now uh, thought to be the, a celebratory angle yes. whereby now yes. any yeah. celebration yeah. Mm -hmm. birthday parties mm -hmm. christmas day jesus mm -hmm. is being born but someone is <laughs> interesting <laughs> anyway thank you so much for coming thank you all too. right thank so you. we traverse to East